air. So the problem is, you got the thin part of the shoe, if you're a right hander, on this side. That's mental. But, so, if you... So, if you want to make a, a single-handed cut, you got to have the fat part of the shoe there. Fat, see the fat part there. You've got to have that resting on there for stability. So, you've got to flick it around and learn how to use your saw left-handed. I mean, when you're as talented as I am, it only takes a couple of strokes. I can imagine the average punter is going to have a uh, bit of a hard time making the, making the switch. There's your cut. You got a pretty sort of tidy that way and pretty tidy that way. Yeah, whereas if you're a natural right hander and you try and cut with the way this shoe's set up, so I'm holding it in my left, I should hold it in my right hand. See the fat bit of the shoe, right, fat bit there on the right hand side, hangs out, hangs out over your cut, and your shoes aren't like can rock side to side. Yeah, this is the sort of problem I'm talking about. Like, I don't know if you can pick that up. But you get this slight beveling because the saw can rock around in your hand. Yeah, you can see it better there. It's like a pronounced bevel because the saw was rocking around. Whereas when the shoe's big, flat, fat part of the shoe is sitting on the wood, you don't get that. Oh well, maybe it'll just come with practice. Yeah, so I put, I put as much effort and concentration into b making both those cuts. And um, it's just a shitload easier when you got the fat part of the bevel, oh, sorry, fat part of the shoe on the wood as opposed to on the waste wood that you're cutting off. So um, maybe it's just the way I cut. Uh, and the fact that uh, I've been using that saw for two days now and my previous experience, that's uh, uh, about two months. So... Probably just me. Oh, and if you're wondering how I got those awesome overhead aerial shots of me cutting the saw. Cheeky camera rig.